And George, thanks very much indeed for joining me on the programme. I wonder whether you um, were able to hear anything of what your father was saying today. Yeah, firstly, Vanessa, I've got to say, you're looking absolutely amazing. That's very nice of you to say. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. Right. I did pop in the parole hearing very briefly today. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've, I, I've sort of tried to stay away because I don't want to be involved in this circus and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, I've, I've looked, uh, you know, I've had a lot of messages from the legal team and all the rest of it, and I don't think he's done himself any favours today. I mean, you some don't. of the things that... Well, well, the I program, mean, I, I hear he was swearing a lot, but what was the thing, what, what were the sorts of things he said that you felt might have set his, his cause back a bit? Well, the thing is, you're dealing with the parole board and you're pleading with three people to let you out of prison. Yeah. And the last thing you want to do is start telling them to get on with it and hurry up because you, you know, you're bored and all the rest of yeah. it. Um, I can understand his frustration. You've got, you've got to remember, he's been in prison for a long time. He's, you know, all this authoritarian figure beat sort of thing. Um, it, you know, is always something that riles him up. Um, but it's his parole here and it's his chance to get his story out there. And you would have thought it would be a chance to be really respectful. Um, but, you know, his, his, his legal team, you know, somebody wanted to get them to go to the toilet and he's like, what are you doing that for? Um, did, did you ever get to live in the same house as your father? Uh, no, didn't, no. No, I, I was brought up in a children's home. I didn't... He, he went into prison when I was three years old. Right. Uh, so, I, I mean, that just sums it up, really, because look at me, I'm 51. And he's been in prison for, you know, since I was three. Absolutely. That's... And, and do, you, do you ever visit him? Are you allowed to visit him? Do you ever do it? Yeah, I've, I, I visit him uh, every couple of weeks. Oh, you visit him every couple of weeks, do you? And when you, <laughs> when you do visit him, what kind of state of mind do you find him in? What kind of mood do you find him in? Do you know what? This is an amazing question because when I go and see him, yeah. it's literally like, sitting down with someone at the pub and having a beer and having a chat and having a really good giggle and having a laugh. He's nothing like he's portrayed right. on, uh, you know, in the media. Um, you know, we have a right laugh. All the screws sit there and have a laugh with us. I mean, they're all sat there, you know. They know he's no harm. They know he's no threat. Mm. Every time I go to the prison, all the prison officers always say to me, your dad should have been met out years ago. I don't know why he's still in the system. When, when was um, the last time he did something violent, like took someone hostage or did something that got him more years inside? I think the last time he did anything wrong was about eight years ago. Right. And since I, I, me and Charlie started our relationship as father and son, I only found out it was my dad about seven years ago. Oh. So since I've been starting visiting him and starting to see him, I've been working with him closely. When we speak on the phone every single night, um, you know, visit him every couple of weeks. Every month I go to the management meetings with the psychologists, the, you know, the offender management people that were there today, the, you know, the prison governor's office. Yeah. But we sit down every month and work out how well he's doing, what we can do to improve him uh, and all the rest of the stuff. But... Uh, it's a bit of a situation at the moment because we've sort of me and Charlie like sort of fall out quite a quite a bit as most families do now and again. Um, I did a TV documentary Channel Four, um, which was on last week mm. called Bronson. Um, should he be free? Um, and the, the you know the, the the documentary was very positive. Um, I you know did some filming of Charlie on some visits that we did that you know maybe shouldn't have done, but Charlie was fully aware of it. Mm. Uh, the documentary was his chance for me. It was his chance to get his word out to, you know, the world about what his conditions have been like and how he's been treated. Yes. And I thought the documentary was very positive, but at the end of it, um, they, 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 they misrepresented me in an edit where at the end of the documentary it finished off with them saying to me, do you think it caused any damage to you when he gets out? Mm. And I said, well, he could walk down the road and stab me with a bread knife or beat me up, I don't know. But I went on to say that anybody could walk down the road and stab anyone with a bread knife. And I also said the only thing that Charlie would stab anyone with when he gets released yeah. is a paintbrush because he's an artist now. And they edited all that out and right. just left a bit about me saying he's going to stab me with the bread knife. So we had a massive argument. He's not talking to me at the minute, so, you know, it is what it is. Okay. But after his performance today at the, uh, at, at the uh, parole hearing... Do you, do, you, do, you wish, do you wish that the parole board would release your father? Do you wish he could come out? Do you, would you feel confident and safe? Or if he were to be released, would you spend every night, every day, worried, sick, waiting for the call that said your father's just taken someone hostage or he's just hurt someone or he's done something criminal? And would you be kind of in a state of complete worry at all times about it? No, do you know what? I would not have one concern or one worry really? whatsoever. Really? Wow. Because all the offences that he's committed have all been inside prison uh -huh. against the system and against, you know, screws and governors and all the rest of it that cage him up like an animal for 23 hours a day. Uh -huh. If you get an animal and you put it in a cage uh -huh. and you lock it up for 23 hours a day and keep poking a stick at it, one day you're going to open that cage door and that animal's going to go for you. 
So what's happened is the prison service have actually, they've actually made Charlie what he is. And now he has been what he has. They don't know how to deal with him. He deserves a chance to get out because for the last eight years, he's not done anything wrong. He's not been violent. He's rehabilitated himself with all his artwork. And he deserves a chance to be given freedom. And if he comes out and does something wrong, he's the first person that knows. He'll be straight back inside. That'll be the last nail in his coffin. And he'll never, ever get out. And he'll die in prison. Tell me something. I know you've just fallen out with your dad, but this is, I know this might be a slushy question. Forgive me for asking. I just feel I want to know the answer. Do you love him? I love him to bits. Do you? We have such an amazing relationship. We get on so well. I mean, the thing is, Charlie's very stubborn. He's really old school. So he's sat in his ways. And the problem with Charlie, if he decides something, he decides it and it's his way or it's the highway. Right. You know, it, and, and he finds very basic things difficult to deal with and understand. But because I've got such a good rapport and a good relationship with him, I can sit down and explain things to him in a, in a, in a methodical manner Mm -hmm. so that he actually, you know, he understands the process of what's happening and then he's completely fine again. The problem is, if you just say to him, do this or do that or do the other, mm -hmm. he's like, don't talk, I'm not doing that. You well, know, but one, if you explain... One more question, George. You know, you said that you, you only came to know that he was your dad. What Was it for the last eight years or something like that? How, seven, how, seven years, seven. Yeah. how did you find out he was your father? Uh, I'm, I'm the UK's number one paparazzi. I have um, a paparazzi that. on Channel 4. And he watched my paparazzi channel, uh, my paparazzi programme from his cell. Yeah. And then he saw the name George Bambi. Then he realised who I thought was my original dad, George Bambi, used to have a bookmakers in Manchester. And oh. Charlie robbed it. Uh, right. So they, And then Charlie ended up having a bit of a fling with my mum. And then a couple of years later, he went into prison. Gosh. Wow. How do you know I'm a paparazzi anyway? Have I done you before? Of course you have. And tell me something else. What about your... Your mum, did she did she have strong feelings for your dad? I mean, had she really fallen for him? I was brought up in a children's home. My mum was an alcoholic. I've, I've had nothing to do with my mum whatsoever. Gosh, you've had something of a life, George, haven't you, really? How amazing. Thank you so much for making the time for me this evening. I 